So here we are in London with Royna Stoltz. Royna, welcome. Thank you. Royna, you have a new album under the moniker The Flower King called Manifesto of an Alchemist. And that's out, I think, on the 23rd of November here in the UK. And we're looking forward to seeing you uh, bringing your current band, your latest band, mm -hmm. over uh, on tour in Europe um, as we get into December, I think. That's right. That's right. So I guess the first question to ask is you're now back to being of the Flower King singular, not yeah. plural. <laughs> back, is, it, is it back to the start or is it kind of a new beginning? Well, uh, it's kind of back to the start, you know. Uh, as many people know, the start was just me and the tape recorder. Today, we don't have a tape recorder. We have computers. So it's another, whatever, 23 years passed. And, and you know, everything went from reel to reel tape to, to whatever hard disk recorders and mm. now computer-based recordings, you know, and you have these layers of hard drives with full of music and tracks and so it changed a bit but um, you know basically uh, it's you know about me writing songs realizing the songs getting some help from people you know because I'm not a big <laughs> not a great drummer I can drum I think I drummed on one track uh, in the early days but you know and I, I used to be a bass player, so yes, I do play bass on a couple of songs on this album, actually. And I was actually out playing bass with Steve Hackett, so obviously I can play bass, but my main instrument is guitar. I do play keyboards, which I did on the first Flower King album, and been doing on and off on other Flower King's albums, and you know. So it all all comes from when I'm writing songs uh, is just me in the studio and uh, and I with lots of instruments I have bass and I have keyboard stuff and and I just do whatever it takes you know and these days it's it's like well it's a keyboard doesn't mean it's a piano a keyboard can be something you put down your hand and you get French horns or you get uh, cellos or timpanis or per lots of percussion and there's loops and you know all that stuff so so it's um, it's sort of a candy store for a musician you know and I'm thinking back mm. now too to when I started because what you had basically you had a electric guitar and maybe a fuss box and you connected it to a tape recorder but these days there's so much you can do uh, uh, like more like a one-man band and you create you orchestrate your music so now that you've re reclaimed your kingdom, has oh, that kind of, yes. <laughs> has that given you kind of a new sense of invention and creativity as the the lead vocalist, the lead lyricist? Um, I don't know. I I haven't thought much about it really. I I just uh, go on do what what needs to be done really. So to make uh, to make like a, a finished product, whatever it takes. Either you. You call someone and say, can you play some bass on my, my tracks here? Or, or can you sing on, on these tracks? Or you actually send them an email or a fa through Facebook or whatever, you know, what you use these days. But um, uh, it's, well, I mean, the, the basics of everything is, is me having these songs and trying to finish them. Yes, I did write the lyrics. Yes, I did write the music. And uh, I have have some kind of kind of an idea what I want it to sound like in the end, you know. And then uh, then either I play the instrument myself, or if there's something specific I look for, you know, I call a guy and he rig up his Hammond organ and he plays some Hammond organ on it, you know. Until I, f I feel the song is finished, you know, I can make a mix of it. So so it's uh, you know. And I, and I noticed on some of the songs, like the support, it is is one of those where there's a definite um, sense of personal um, comment on, on the way on the way the world is right now. So, mm -hmm. is this your first opportunity to to share your own feelings through lyrics? I've, I've done that. I mean, since the very first Flower King album I did in '94, uh, I think there were, there were sort of well political comments or more like. A, my outlook on the world 
as it was and as it is today and uh, I mean I like vocal music you know but just singing na la 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 that that wouldn't really work so you need to sing about something you know and then uh, I just sit down very spontaneously and, and write something down and and something that was a little bit different this time was that actually working with the demos I just hooked up a microphone and started singing so th there is stuff that was kind of almost I was sort of jamming then you have to go back of course and you have to rewrite certain things but uh, the same way as I hook up a guitar and, and, and play stuff very spontaneously and then then I use bits of it I did the same thing with lyrics I've never done that before usually you sit down and you listen to the song and you, you, you write your lyric and then when you have something that you think works then you hook up the microphone and then you start singing this time I didn't have any paper I just you know from my head sang certain things and and uh, I was thinking okay maybe it doesn't stay in the end I, I, I write something something else but I kind of like what I had I had certain phrases certain things maybe a chorus or something and then I I did the rest of the lyric, you know, once I decided I will record this song. So that, that was that was a kind of a more spontaneous way of, of writing lyrics. And, and when you do, it's, uh, I don't know, it could be whatever, you know, you, you, you sit down and, and watch the news or you read a paper, you watch something on, on the internet and you see something, some comment and then you, your head starts spinning and you you, uh, you just stay with that so I think I mean honestly I, I, I didn't think much it's, it wasn't really planned to be something or there's there's really not a concept or uh, no and this came about pretty pretty quickly I guess from the writing to the recording it, and the release it, it, it did it did and I, <laughs> I think I was I was kind of forced by the record company in a way, or whatever, they have a, re a release schedule, you know, and I was thinking, oh, okay, I can, I can maybe, I can record whatever, the drums, and we can start working on the songs, and then maybe I can release it next year, and I, I think it came back to the fact that I said, well, we can release it before Christmas. So the record label said, uh, well, we put, put it in now in the schedule, and this is complicated, you know, you got to finish the album so we can release it before Christmas. I had to really, you know, uh, work from early morning until midnight, basically, every day to, uh, to be able to get the record uh, ready. And, and mixing takes, normally I would say I spend 10 days on mix, mixing the album. This time I think I may have used six or seven days mixing mm -hmm. the album, which is, I mean, you can go on and on and on and, and just mix and remix and, and add things or take away things uh, because because of the situation as it is I mean back in the days you know pe people were in, in big expensive studios they had to you know cut it short they had to really finish you know they had a certain amount of money that the record company wanted to spend on on but uh, nowadays everyone has a computer you we can go on and on forever but uh, for me it was more like uh, the record company put up a deadline so I had to be a good boy and you know meet the deadline so do you see this as a, a solo album but in the spirit of the Flower Kings yes I mean uh, I mean what is the Flower Kings the Flower Kings yes it's a band but it it it, it it's also uh, something that was driven by me. I was the guy, you know, saying, okay, let's make another album. I was the guy saying, let's go on tour. And, you know, and I, I uh, sort of handle all the, uh, the economics and all that, that stuff, you know, sort of the beh behind the scenes of what people see when they go to see a show. And so, so there's not a lot that changed really, you know, it's more like I, I got the freedom to, to work with whoever I wanted and I wasn't restricted to write certain songs for the other singer I wasn't restricted to work with each and every member on each and every song uh, so I think that's basically the difference really 
And given these time constraints and the fact that you were king of your own flower castle, mm -hmm. um, were you able to resurrect ideas, riffs, demos from years ago that you've never, never had the chance to finish? Yes, a little bit of that, you know. I, I usually write music and, and uh, in a certain period of time there's whatever, the Flower Kings uh, active and, and touring and, and recording and uh, other times transatlantic and, and and I'm just writing music so it's not like I I, I don't write specifically for, for a Flower Kings album. I, I write every now and then all the time uh, when I have free time. Uh, so I don't know. This is uh, this is just uh, a mix of songs that or stuff that were lying around that was something that may have been refused or people weren't interested in before, and maybe I listened back and then I felt like, well, half the song was good, or or that chorus was good, or that intro was really interesting, but the rest of the song was crap. So so just. And and then you're not so, you're not really. Uh, it's not like. It's not getting personal. It's not like someone is cut, chopping your song, off or, yeah. or or or, uh, you know, uh, butchering your song. It's more like I can look at it and say I like that bit. I can use that, and then I write something new and, and, uh, pretty much spontaneous. So I, I would say yes. It's it's from now. It's from some years back and. There are bits for sure that are from uh, from maybe 20, 25 years ago when I got my first computer. My kids were... So it's a kind of re rebirth or reintroduction of, of, of the, the singular Flower King. Mm -hmm. Is there a track on the album that you direct some of the likes prog or your type of music, but maybe is a little bit unfamiliar with Roina? Is there one track that you would say, that's a good representation? That. Ah, okay. Uh, on this no, album? No, not really. I, I can't tell really. I'm too close to the things. I, I th there's, there's probably certain things in my guitar playing that's, be oh, see, that's Reiner. Or, oh, that's a typical Reiner melody. I, I can't tell really. I can tell it's... it's. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I work with the album, but I, I if you ask me to sing a melody now on the album, I, I probably couldn't. There's <laughs> so, so many other albums and so much music, you know. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I think it's a mix. And there's, there's some new sounds, there's some old sounds, and, uh, and there's some acoustic sounds. And uh, there may, may be things that I haven't done before, but there's for sure things I've done many times before. So, <laughs> so I'm. I mean, you're right. Yeah, there's, I, I there's, usually say that people people are are very naive thinking that that you can do something that's entirely new. I yeah. mean, yeah, we're going to see you two tomorrow, and I I don't expect these guys to come up with something that's completely new, you yeah. know, or whatever Steve Hackett or or you know Coldplay or these guys. There's going to be a few new things, but you can't get away from who you are. And, the way you're writing or the way you're singing or playing you know and and I think it's a good thing you know Paul McCartney has a new album out and I expect it to be Paul McCartney not something else you know so so uh, I don't worry too much about yeah you're right I mean that there's certainly there's a signature sound of your voice and your the, mm. your guitar style mm. although your guitar style itself mm. that has the jazzy bit you mm. have kind of the the clean the clean sort of Steve yeah. Howie type of sound, yeah. and then you have the your your wonderful sustained sound yeah. you have as yeah. well, and that's yeah. all throughout the album. Yeah, yeah. And I, the one the one I was going to mention is Baby Angels, because you've got almost like a, a Hawaiian or ukulele it, it, type of it, intro. It, it is ukulele. I I have two of them or three maybe, but it, yeah, it, it's actually ukulele, and I think ukulele and acoustic guitar. But uh, I think for sure the ukulele is is front, and I think everything started with ukulele. So, yeah, I think that's the first time. I may have used it on another album, but it could have been on something on the sea within. I can't remember now. But yeah, for sure, it's a it's a different different song, and I wanted to have something that's 
tiny because there's lots of bombastic things so I, I wanted to cut it down to something that's really and with a tiny voice and everything you know it's like a prog lullaby it's great <laughs> well it's I don't know what it is I, I, I mean the, the, the natural reaction would be like oh the prog guys they're gonna hate this I mean all these guys that like whatever dream theater and they think oh Roy he was in, in, in transatlantic with Mike you know and they're listening to this album and oh no not ukulele not this this very tiny voice and but again you know I, I I thought it was you know fun good fun to to do something that was a bit different so maybe yeah. uh, the next project will be the ukulele kings what do you think I I, I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so but you know it's it's fun and you know and you have instruments I I bought something we were in in uh, Portugal I think I bought, bought some some guitar I I think I used it on the Anderson Stolt album, actually. It's like a Portuguese guitar with, mm. I don't know, 16 strings or something. I can't remember now, but, you know, so you always try to find something, a new sound that, that not necessarily need to come from an, an electric guitar, you know. The last track on the album, which I, which I also really mm -hmm. like, because it is, I found it somewhat different, mm -hmm. is The Spell of Money. It's almost mm -hmm. like a, a response to Pink Floyd's money. You know, it's, it's, oh, it's yeah. like a real commentary on the, the, yeah. the evils yeah, uh, but, of mean, dirty it, money. Is, isn't Pink Floyd's uh, song, the, well, that's, that's, yeah. isn't it this kind of the same comment? I, I, think, I think because the way it's wrapped up in a very commercial type of song, a lot, a lot of people it's like it's like it's like born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Exactly, exactly. People I was people take that. a completely different meaning from it. Yeah. Because Pete the Springsteen song is a, a diatribe against yeah. the states, and people think it's an anthem for the states. I know. And money is the same, but I liked yours because it's it's very clear it from the clear, lyrics yeah. that yeah, that's what be, you mean. Could be, could be, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, I I like money. We all <laughs> like money, but well, the thing is, I that is. Let me put it this way, I wouldn't do anything for money. I mean, I know musicians that are only interested in the money part. Mm -hmm. I know musicians who are definitely not interested in the money. They, they do exactly what they want to do and they live a life in misery as long as they can play their very, very specific kind of whatever exactly. avant-garde jazz, <laughs> you know, which is fine, uh, you know, that's, that's good. But and, and I'm probably somewhere in between because, you know, to be able to be working with the music full time, I I need some kind of a well income actually. I need to have an audience, you know. So I want an audience, and I want of course money, but I wouldn't do anything for money, and I wouldn't uh, sort of trade friendship for money and all that, you know. I think you understand. Yeah. So that so. that leads on, on into co uh, your collaborators, both on mm -hmm. the album and then people in, in Reuner's world. Mm -hmm. So on the album, you've got Marco Miniman, mm -hmm. um, you've got Jonas on bass. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I guess Marco, because he was on the Sea Within project as well. Yes, yes. Did that sort of naturally follow that you'd include him? Well, uh, to be honest, it was actually, we were doing a show in, in uh, uh, on the Lorelei Festival this summer. And, uh, and uh, he was a little bit hesitant to fly all the way to, to Europe to play one show and oh my goodness I got to be on this plane to fly to Europe you know and, and so I was just trying to motivate him and say come on uh, I'll get you a recording you know you can make some more money you know and, and you, we have spent a few days recording drums for that one and uh, basically because I'm gonna I, I was I was going to record it anyway, but to be honest, I wasn't really ready to record it. And I was thinking, okay, I'll do it maybe this autumn or something, or this, this winter. But, uh, you know, so that's, that's the way it happened, you know. He was, he was coming over to play the show, and then we spent... I booked two days in the studio to record drums. He did it in one day. I can imagine. <laughs> but that, that's what I love, love about, about you. You're, you're part of this... It's a bit, a bit the same as, as Neil Morse. You, yeah. you have this ecosystem of, of friends that are also musicians. Yeah. Um, so I also noticed that you had um, Rob Townsend, yeah. who you played with on yeah. the Steve Hackett tour, uh, but then also Nad Sylvan, yeah. you know, the great singer. Yeah. That you, that, so tell me a bit about how you got to know Nad in Agents of Mercy, because I understood you were the reason that Steve Hackett hired him. Yeah, kind of, yeah. 
Well, Ned was someone I've actually found on the internet, uh, and just for, someone talked about this guy singing whatever he sounds like Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins at the same time. So I just clicked on something that, whatever you're browsing around YouTube stuff, and uh, and I heard this guy say, "Wow." this is a Swedish guy you know and, and I instantly liked his voice you know there are some people that don't like his voice but I, I actually like his voice quite a lot and the quality and the uh, the phrasing and everything you know I said this is a really professional guy and then I really looked at him I said well this guy I met this guy before you know and I remember he came to a show I played with the Flower Kings somewhere in Sweden and presented himself and he was you know, there's something about it was a little bit different than other people, you know. And so I remembered him and said, well, that's the guy we met, you know, at the concert, you know, and and I liked him. And, and I was working on an album at the time, uh, thinking of probably like this, singing myself. And then I said, oh, maybe I have someone else singing a few tracks. That was the first Agents of Mercy album. So I asked him to would you mind singing a few, trying to sing a few tracks on this album I'm working on? And he did, and then I liked it so much, I said, well, you can sing on all the album. Frankly, I, I, I think it would be great if you sang on all the album. So he did. So that's how it started, you know, and then, uh, and then we played a few shows and, you know, we did three albums. And uh, I got to know him and uh, we, you know, got along real well and, and with the other guys with Jonas and and, uh, and Lalle who, who was the keyboard player who was in the band too so so we had lots of fun you know and so great uh, great band actually to be around I think and uh, yeah and then he uh, he got the offer from Steve and uh, you know so we, we played in Agents of Mercy and then of course I I uh, played for almost a year with Steve also doing 80, 85 shows. And here's, here's, a, here's a, a funny thing, I saw Steve Hackett play the London Palladium last week yeah. and guess who was playing bass? I know, <laughs> I know, and I know Jonas was really, he was so frustrated when I got the gig because he said to me, well I'm the bass player. And I said, Jonas, yes you are the bass player but I'm also a bass player because Ned knew that I I played bass and, and Ned really liked my bass playing and he said uh, probably w he sold in the idea because I played bass so it, it, Steve probably said well Roy plays guitar he's a great guitar player but yeah but he plays bass too and uh, and the thing is I I grew up with Genesis so for me it was uh, came very natural so I mean, <laughs> playing all this I mean the cinema show and all these songs and Jonas came from somewhere else he was more like a metal guy, so he grew up listening to Ju Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and these guys, you know. And <laughs> and I was sort of completely between 13 and, and 17, I think I was completely in, in yeah. Genesis and Yes Land, you know. So I knew all the songs <laughs> from back then. Um, yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Er, both Jonas and myself, we been playing bass with Steve. And talking about live, I guess the most significant thing, we're talking about the, the new album, Manifesto of an Alchemist, mm -hmm. coming out on the 23rd of November. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have a tour. I think you're starting in, in South America yes. um, next month. And then you, your first date, for my notes here, in Norway on the 30th of November. And then in December, you're in Europe, uh, going to Norway, Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, France. Netherlands, and then finally you arrive in the UK mm -hmm. uh, with dates in London and then Manchester. Mm -hmm. So, and for those dates, you're with Neil, the Neil Morse Band. No, with when, Spock's Beard. With Spock's Beard, ah, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what used to be Neil Morse Band? <laughs> that's right. Yes, yeah. because before it was, yeah. uh, um, it was the Neil Morse Band when oh, you uh, I know, you I appeared know, in did, 2013. Did, with, I, that's that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I remember then you. You, you kind of did it like a transatlantic based we did. encore. We did. We did. Now with Spock's beard, is, mm -hmm. it, is it, could we expect any type of uh, collaboration or who knows? We, we haven't talked about anything. No one has said anything. Well, maybe someone mentioned something in the very beginning, but I haven't. I, I talked to Dave and we haven't really 
maybe we do something. We'll probably find out. I think there's so many other things, you know, with 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 gear and you know, all the <laughs> the crew and all that. You know, we need to the, lots of things we know, need to sort out before we get into the music. Actually, <laughs> and are you, are you ready looking to the future beyond uh, the the Flower King project uh, and this tour? Other collaborations? Uh, no, not not really. I mean, I think what what will probably happen now is we do South America with the Flower King thing, and we do this tour with Spox uh, in December, and then we have two shows in Canada, I think, with the Flower King thing. And uh, my guess is that because you know you get mails and people are start asking about. Uh, festivals and stuff like that so I think what will happen next year is probably that we keep going doing more shows because once we have played together and we know the songs we can of course we can we can play more you know and anyone that you haven't collaborated with that you'd like to collaborate with uh, Peter Gabriel for one example yeah I mean that's 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 the question that comes up, you know, and say, oh well, Peter Gabriel or Joni Mitchell or Paul McCartney. That's I think the the, the three I I mentioned: Joni Mitchell, Paul McCartney, and Peter Gabriel. <laughs> Did I read correctly that one of your sons is called Peter Gabriel? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And uh, your other son is named uh, Juan Sebastian. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask if you'd had a daughter, what would you have called her? <laughs> Kate Bush, Joni, Kate Bush, <laughs> Joni Mitchell. <laughs> I, I don't know actually. Maybe we probably had to drop that idea and be no, more like a normal name. But I think, I mean, the thing is, I mean, uh, we discussed it and I think Peter is, is kind of a common name in, in, uh, in Sweden and Gabriel too. But Gabriel is not like a surname, it's like, a, what do you say, this given, given name. Yes. Yeah. So, so both of them, like Peter, Gabriel. Forsberg, that's actually her surname. Um, but and Johann Sebastian, the same thing, you know. But uh, it's it's kind of both Johann uh, and uh, Sebastian. They're two very nice names, I think. In in particular, Sebastian. So that's that's what we call him, Sebastian. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm not like Frank Zappa. I would call my son, <laughs> sons uh, Dweezil or something like that, or Moon Unit or what's that's right, the other yeah. one? Uh, Diva, I think. That's yeah. Yeah, you just imagine the first day in school and you had to present yourself. I'm called Diva. <laughs> oh, <the> Diva. <laughs> or Dweezil. I think Dweezil mentioned something about. He he thought it was kind of embarrassing, you know, first day in school, you know, but. Maybe because his dad was famous, you know, you know, he got along well with his <laughs> friends. But I think it's kind of sinister, actually, too. I agree. Yeah. Ron, it's been such a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. And remind people that Manifesto of an Alchemist is out very soon, about a month's time. Great album. It appeals to anyone that likes mm -hmm. Flower Kings mm -hmm. or Flower King yeah. um, and many of the other collaborations, great musicians, the tour looks great mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're playing a great venue in London and also Manchester um, mm -hmm. at the uh, in, in the middle of December so yes. thank you again and yep. we'll see you on the road thanks